Hi everybody, this is a requested video from a user who wanted to know how to use data streaming with OpenAI, Langchain and FastAPI. I will show you how to use streaming on its own, which is kinda easy, and then how to use it with FastAPI in the front end, which is not really as easy as I thought it would be, but together we will make it. You will find the link to the code in the video description. Okay, I'm currently in PyCharm. And as you can see, I've got multiple files here. I'm currently in the test.py. This is just a little bit of sample code. I will show you how it works. So first we have to import some classes from Langchain, which is chat openai and human message, also load.env, because we have to use our openai API key. And this is how we can load it. We will also use a stream standard out callback handler in the model, and then we will create an instance of chat openai and use the callback here as parameter. Temperature is zero to make it more reliable. And then we will just use uh, the chat function here, pass in a human message, and the content is write me a song about sparkling water. If you run that, let's do it, python test.py, we can see that we make a request and that the model should then return uh, a song about sparkling water. Okay, that took some time, but as you can see, this uh, is the response. And this was of course not streamed. If we want streaming, we can just pass in the parameter streaming and set it to true. Standard is false. And as you can see now, the text is generated token by token. So we don't have to wait for the model to actually create the whole text, but we get it sent back uh, bit by bit. So that's basically it. You just have to set streaming to true to make it work just with OpenAI. And now we will take a look at fast API. Okay, the text for the application is in the main.py. You will find it there. What we first have to do is we have to import some classes, of course, and we have to import the async iterator callback handler now, not the normal stream callback handler, because we will actually use that to yield the token and we of course use the chat OpenAI model and human message to actually send one message to OpenAI. So a very basic endpoint, but it shows how in general streaming with fast API works. So then we load our API key again, and then we will create the app instance by instantiating fast API. Then we will add course middleware because we actually want to use a front end, which is in the index.html, and then we will also create a Pydantic class just to make the endpoint a little bit more verbose. And we will just send this content here as message to OpenAI. Okay, now we come to the tricky part. And what we're gonna do is we will create an async function, which we call send message that takes content as input, which matches here this content property of the message class. And this will return an async iterable with strings in it this is very important. This is needed for fast API to work and then also instantiate the chat OpenAI model. And very important here, set streaming to true and also use the async iterator callback handler here as callback. Okay, now we will use async.io to create an asynchronous task, which we have to await. And what we pass there is the model which uses the a generate function. So this is for asynchronous generation of the content and we pass in a human message here, which is from Langchain, and pass the content which we pass here as attribute for this class. Okay, after creating the task, we can now make use of the callback handler and use the aiter method here to actually loop over all of the tokens and yield this token here. But why do we actually need that? We need that to actually know that we don't have any more tokens to return. So if every token was yielded, we can now set the callback to done. If we know that the callback here is done, we can now await the task from async.io, which we created here and just await that. So that's the function itself. And now we can create our endpoint. So to do this, we will create a post endpoint where we can send in the message here and also make this an async endpoint. We call it stream chat. And here we first uh, take in the message as input and pass that to the send message function here. And this will actually return a generator. And we will use that generator in combination with a streaming response from fast API and pass it here as input. And we also set the media type to text and event stream. 
Okay, now we can run our web application. We release UVRCorn as web server here and run UVRCorn main. This is the name of the file. And then use here the name of the app, which is just app. And we will run it on port 6677. And now we can see our application is up and running. And we can also use the Swagger UI to actually see it. But this Swagger UI does not work with streaming responses. As you can see here, we generate our response and we don't get it back bit by bit, but it waits until the whole uh, process is done. So to make that work, we can use a different approach and just use the request library. And here everything is prepared now. As you can see, we sent in a message. We pass that message here um, in the correct format here. Content is the attribute of this class here. And we send it with a post method here to this URL. We pass in the data as JSON and set stream to true. Now we can loop over the chunks bit by bit. So let's try that out. Text test stream.py. If you're interested in making that work on a website, we will take a look now at the index.html and how that is structured. Okay, let's take a look at the index.html. And as you can see here, this is just a little bit of HTML and I will not walk you through in that detail because that's actually, yeah, it's JavaScript code and uh, my projects are more about Python and LangChain. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. We will create a message which will be attached to a button which will be triggered when we click on it. So this will make a post request and we will send the value which is inside this text input field here. So this will be sent to OpenAI. So we make this post request here to localhost. I can see that's the wrong port. And yeah, the stream endpoint, we will send again the body as JSON and the content here is the message, which is the content here of this text input field. So to display that token by token, we use the get reader functionality here, and we also use the text decoder, and then just loop over the result here. And if we don't have any more tokens, we will return the function. And if we have tokens, we will decode the token first. So, and then we will check if the token is a stop a symbol, like a dot, an exclamation mark or a question mark. And if that's the case, we will trigger a new line with the BR tag and also pass in that token to the inner HTML. So we will update the DOM for each token. And yeah, that's it. Of course, that's not the most robust solution. Normally you would use, a, let's say a framework which is able to handle that in a better way, but for a prototype, that's fine. So let's change the port here to 7.7 to make it match our API. And now let's have a look at the front end. So this is the front end. We can now just ask, how are you to test that? And here you can see this is streamed. Um, maybe write about sparkling water to make a little bit more text content. And yeah, that's how streaming works. And as you can see, here's a question mark. So we create a new line and this works pretty nice. So yeah, that's it. That was the project. And if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video, of course. Thank you very much. Bye bye.